Hey everybody, it is Kent. I am uh, hoping to do a day in the life video uh, showing you everything I do as an online seller and a bookstore owner. So first, gonna get in the car, head to work. Uh, I'm hoping to do a complete breakdown of everything I do, uh, all my eBay listings, uh, working with uh, customers, buying books, selling books. Um, so first, gotta head to work. Okay, just kidding. I live in the back of the bookstore. I have living quarters back there. So all I have to do is walk down the hallway, turn the lights on. I love living at work. Uh, it's kind of nice. I uh, can work all crazy hours of the day. Uh, let me go turn on the uh, lights for you quick. Sorry, it's a little spooky in here. There we go. Okay, lights are on. Let's get the day started nice and early. Uh, and actually, I think later in the day, I'm going to give you a bookstore tour. Uh, so stay tuned to the end of the video if you want to see what my bookstore looks like. Um, but yeah, here, let's get started. Got uh, shipping to do first. Good morning, everybody. It is Kent with KG's Books. I am going to do a quick video, a day in my life, show you exactly what I do. Uh, so first thing, it's 4.58 in the morning. I'm nice early start to work. I'm going to show you. First thing I do is my shipping. Uh, I work on invoicing and a little bit of shipping uh, at night when people pay right away. And then I got to do a bunch of the shipping in the morning today. I'll show you. have 12 orders ready to go. I think there's uh, going to be five uh, individual books and then uh, someone bought a big pile of books so first up I'm going to get those organized and together and I'll show you a little bit of how I do the packaging and then on to the rest of the day all right first order to package we have uh, shelter trees in war and peace and a book on Austrian travel so I'm gonna take the handy dandy newspaper uh, I know I get a lot of hate uh, at least online not in real life um, for using bubble mailers uh, to package all my books. I know a lot of antiquarian book dealers will use boxes. It's just unbelievably uh, time consuming and then you have to track down crazy amounts of packing material as well uh, if you want to package them securely. But I would say um, I get a complaint on eBay, maybe one out of a thousand books. Um, so 99.9% .9 of my books arrive safely. So First, wrap the books in newspaper, take one of my handy dandy bubble mailers. I am thinking about changing up uh, my bubble mail, bubble mailer supplier and switching to the, um, not the eBay branded ones, but more of the poly mailer, the plastic kind of things versus the craft paper mailers. Uh, so just, and I have um, one, two, three, four, I have five or six different sizes of these mailers so you know you want to choose the appropriately sized one and i don't know i mean i i buy books on ebay and they get shipped in all kinds of crazy different ways and i, I don't really care as long as it arrives safely i'm happy pretty easy system down um i think i have 12 orders today but only five to ship, uh, get packaged and shipped this morning. Pretty simple. There you go. It's that easy to package books. And I'll show you. I got three more individual ones, and then I got that pile of books that's going to one customer. So I'm going to uh, track down a box, and I'll show you exactly how I uh, package a big pile like that. All right, I tracked down an appropriately sized box here. Uh, so I'm going to get that taped up nice, uh, get these wrapped in newspaper and get them stuffed in there. I'll show you a little bit how I do that. I'll probably 
fast forward through that process a little bit for you because it probably will take uh, five or six minutes to get these packaged up securely. So stay tuned. All right, after I get the bottom of the box taped up nicely, uh, got these wrapped up in newspaper. I take a bunch of newspaper, make a nice bed of newspaper in the box. So then when you stick them in, it kind of falls right into uh, a bunch of secure packing. So, again, everyone packages things a little bit differently, especially boxes you have to pack them, pack them really tight in there. Uh, of course, I get boxes every week that people just kind of chuck the books in a box uh, without any packaging. And again, as long as they don't get damaged, I don't care. Um, but this seems to work for me. I do go through a lot of newspapers, so if you ever have any, if you're local and you ever have any extra newspapers, feel free to drop them off here at the bookstore. You never have enough newspaper. So there you go. Um, then you gotta push it down, put a little newspaper on top, close it on up, tape it and seal it, and that is how I ship my boxes of books. All right, so I have everything entered into the eBay uh, bulk shipping program. I have my scan sheet printed off. Uh, my mail carrier picks up my packages every day uh, and obviously drops off packages every day as well. Um, so I have a nice scan uh, sheet. He just has to scan that. And here come my thermal labels. Pretty simple. I just got this thermal printer a couple months ago. Um, so basically it prints off these uh, shipping label stickers. Just got to slap them on the package. It's much easier than taping. There we go. 12 labels. First up, we got one going to Melanie for one pound. Perfect. I always check to make sure to get that right. Stick it on the package. Chuck it in the tub. Again, very simple. Definitely suggest... Oh, this one's going on a box. A seven pound box. Just like that. exciting about this part of it so stay tuned uh so usually i start with my shipping right away in the morning get that knocked out um it's only 5 36 so i'm uh had to schedule for the day usually um in the summers it's usually light out about six o'clock so i usually go for a run uh in the winters i get lazy so uh no running i'll probably go for a walk eat breakfast uh take a break and then uh get on to my listing for the day so You'll probably see me next year uh, doing my pictures for my eBay listings. All right, on to the next project of the day. Uh, every night I'm auctioning off 30 books on eBay. So first thing after I get my shipping done for the day, I take pictures of the books. This is my little workstation over here. Uh, I'm usually going to take a picture of the cover and spine. Uh, sometimes the rear cover as well if uh, there's any staining or wear or anything that needs to be noted. Then I'm going to show off the title page and frontispiece, show off all the contents pages, and then show off a bunch of miscellaneous uh, pages throughout. Um, I usually just do 12 pictures uh, of every book because that is what eBay uh, used to allow. Now they offer um, 24 pictures and you could actually make a video. 
Uh, I know a lot of sellers um, have different workflows. Some take a pictures on their phone and then create a draft and then they'll write up the description on their computer. I take all the pictures of all 30 books. Then I sit down and write up descriptions. I'll show you how I do that. Then I sit down and list them all, um, get them ready to go on eBay, schedule them uh, for whatever night they need to go. Uh, here's a quick example of a book I just got done taking pictures of. Again, covers, title page, bunch of odd uh, pages throughout the book. Any condition issues, I sure to take uh, make sure to take a picture of that. Um, this is the first one I did today. It's a really beautiful set, so I actually took 24 photos. I really wanted to show off the condition of these. They're pretty darn nice. Uh, so I took 24 photos of that first one. And again, just like to show off the contents pages, the copyright and title pages, uh, and then again, any interesting illustrations or artwork as well. And then again, you I mean, I just really want to show off the uh, condition is really important. As someone that buys a lot on eBay, um, at a minimum, I want to see the covers and spine. I want to see the title page, maybe some of the contents pages. I want to see examples of illustrations, stuff like that, and then uh, any pictures of condition issues. So I'm going to work on taking pictures here for a little while, and then I'll show you uh, how I type up my descriptions. All right, it is 9.57, so I'm going to flip the open sign on. Uh, if you don't know, I have a bookstore in Marshfield, Wisconsin. Marshfield is a city of about 19,000 people. Uh, I'm a few miles south of it. I'm pretty rural. Uh, if you see, there's a cornfield over there and then a cemetery over there. But uh, U.S. Highway 10 is a pretty high, uh, busy highway, so uh, that's how I find most of my customers. So the pictures are done for the day. Um, I'm going to go over here. Got my laptop all set up. I'm going to show you a quick. Uh, I have a pretty standard template for um, my listings. Uh, I enter the title, the author, and the publishing information. Um, it's pretty standard. This book is in good condition, so I might have to say it's in very good or fair condition. Uh, some cover and spine wear. I'll usually mention if the cover hinges are splitting or anything like that tight binding and hinges again you got to mention if the inside hinges are splitting pages are fairly clean uh I'll, I'll mention if there's any foxing or stains or rips or anything like that uh enter in the dimensions and the page numbers um it varies i would assume it takes anywhere from a minute to a couple minutes um per book um so yeah i will just sit here and do that for the next maybe hour or so All right, I'm going to show you a quick example of how I write up my book descriptions. Uh, so first, I'm going to check the page numbers. 256 pages, enter that in. I'm going to measure it. It is 7 and 1 fourth by 9 and a half. Enter that in. Uh, next, I'm going to do the title page or the uh, title information. So this is Mother Goose and Favorite. Uh, fairy tales arranged by Logan Marshall um, with 400 illustrations. I usually put uh, if it's illustrated or not. Uh, and that one is copyright 1917. Uh, and then I would say this one's in good condition. Uh, check the cover hinges. Cover hinges are good. Um, so I'll just put tight cover hinges and binding. Uh, there is plenty of foxing and staining, so I just put some foxing and staining and then also have a bunch of examples um, in the pictures that hopefully people will look at to get an idea of uh, how bad the foxing and staining is. I don't see any rips or anything like that, so I don't need to um, enter any kind of other page uh, condition kind of stuff. Um, this one, I just say uh, some cover and spine wear. 
Um, again, I kind of rely on the photos to uh, do a little bit of the description as well. So um, that's how I write up something like that. It's pretty simple. All right, it is about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I have all my descriptions typed up, uh, so I'm going to sit here for probably at least the next hour uh, getting everything scheduled on eBay. And then I had a few customers, so I uh, sold some books. And then also uh, I had two people bring in books. Uh, one brought in a huge box of sci-fi books, so I'll get those priced in, in the store. Uh, it's usually pretty simple. I get about two bucks a piece for most of these probably. Some might be a dollar, some might be three, but I don't spend too much time looking any of this stuff up. I just price it and throw it out there. And then actually another person brought in this box of books, um, some cookbooks, and then some home improvement, woodworking, uh, some pretty interesting stuff. So I'll work on getting those sorted and priced as well, um, probably after I get my listing done. And I'm sure I always have a few other projects to work on as well. All right, I got my listings done. I figured I'll run through this box of stuff quick, uh, get them priced, get them sorted. Uh, let's see, taste a home church supper dessert, something like that. Really nice, uh, nice clean cookbook. I usually get like three or four bucks for something like that. Um, some of it's going to get donated. That'll go on the donate pile. The cruise control diet boot camp, that's going to go on the donate pile. The five languages of apology. Uh, that might go in the self-help uh, book section for like three bucks. Stir fry cookbook that's going to get donated. The Jello Fun Kids Cooking, uh, sure, a few bucks for that one. Um, a lot of times when people bring in boxes of books, um, it varies. Sometimes half of them get donated. Sometimes ninety percent of them get donated. Sometimes all of them get donated. Cracking the communication code. I think that one's going to get donated. The Loudest Roar. That one's going to get donated. Donated. Ooh, I have one of those pans. I got it for Christmas uh, like 10 years ago. But that cookbook is getting donated. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. That one will be a few bucks. Yeah, maybe two bucks. Some more little cookbooklets. Those are getting donated. Heirloom Gardener magazine. Uh, that's going to get donated. Uh, there's a bunch of these um, woodworking guides. Home woodworking and finishing. Yeah, something like that will go in the bookstore for probably like four bucks. Uh, it's crazy. I think today I had three people bring in boxes of books uh, for me to look at. And then two more people stop to... Uh, ask about bringing in books um there are plenty of days that i buy many 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 more books than i sell Ooh, that one's kind of cool Good little cupcake cookbook um that one's probably gonna be i don't know three bucks i suppose best of home bake-off pillsbury cookbook 350 recipes i love it when they put pictures of what the uh final product's supposed to look like yeah, that one's probably going to be like four bucks. Taste of Home Best Holiday Spiral Cookbook. That's nice when you can always take the recipe out of the spiral binding. Um, Probably like four bucks on that one. Can't go wrong, four bucks for a big hardcover cookbook. Something like that retails for $35. But I do try to keep my prices... Uh, as reasonable as possible. Oh, let's see if I can get these bookmarks out. Oh, the post it, so that's why. Um, we have the Gooseberry Patch Christmas All Through the Home. Um, yeah, that one's probably gonna be like three bucks. North American Backyard Bird Watching for All the Seasons. That one's kind of nice. Cool. Uh, book on birds. Little facts and stuff about each one. That one's going to be maybe five bucks for that one. All right, we got some more woodworking. We got classic woodworking projects. How to build a rocking chair. 
we have Home Woodworking Projects Volume 1 and... Nope, not Volume 2. We only have Volume 1. It's all good. Someone might have Volume 2 and only needs Volume 1. Woodworking with Sheet Goods. Okay, doing some uh, plywood type projects. I don't have too much for um, like home improvement kind of stuff. Sweetie Pie by Richard Simmons. Is he still alive? I don't know. When life changed forever, I think that one's going to get donated. Ooh, smoothies. Again, a nice little spiral bound one. That one will be like three bucks, I think. One Weekend Woodworking Projects. Four dollars. Garden. Uh, something like that's gonna be like three bucks. Gardening essentials. Four dollars. Great book of green secrets. Green garden secrets. Uh, that one's hmm, might get donated. Cake mix magic. Wow. Cake mix magic. Check it out. That one's very cool. Cupcakes and all kinds of crazy cake decorating. Uh, oh, it's cool, but I think I'm gonna donate it. My bookstore is so full of stuff already. Christmas homecoming. That one's gonna get donated. Zero belly smoothies. That one's gonna get donated. Recipes to remember. Mm, people like these uh, spiral bound books, cookbooks. Three bucks. Container gardening. That one's pretty cool. Check it out. Someone's gonna like that one for four dollars. Three hundred and sixty-five ways to prepare for Christmas. Um, I think that one will be three bucks. Keep it simple. Christmas in my heart. I think that one's gonna get donated. Uh, these are really cool. Outdoor water features. Different uh, 16 easy to build projects. We got woodwork, 16 easy to build projects, and stonework. Uh, and then the Vegetable Gardener's Book of Building Projects. Again, these books are awesome. And again, they retail for, that one retails for $18.95. I think I'm going to ask four bucks for it. Same with these other ones. All right, well, that was a quick project. Six, uh, going on seven minutes to price these. Now I do have to put them all in the store, so that'll take another you know, five to 10 minutes to get these put in the store. Uh, and then I got that sci-fi box. I'll work on those next. Um, let's see, what time is it? It is 3.42. So I have, uh, my auctions end from six to 6.30. So I will be back with the next segment um, then to show you uh, what my evening uh, work looks like. Stay tuned. All right, next project is the sci-fi books. This shouldn't take too long. There's no sorting to do. Just gonna fly through these. Uh, again, most of these are gonna be two bucks a piece. Pretty simple project. I'll probably fast forward through most of this project, but um, I figure I'll give you an idea of what exactly it entails. Again, I don't spend too much time looking this stuff up. I know a lot of bookstores you go to and they're gonna have a bunch of different prices on all their stuff, um, but paperbacks are nice and simple. All right, it is six o'clock at night. The bookstore is closed. Uh, now my auctions end on eBay from 6 to 6.30. I have them ending in one minute increments. So every minute when item ends. So I sit here, watch them, hopefully get bid up a little bit, and then uh, send an invoice um, in case someone needs combined shipping. I'll show you. Here we go. We got $36. Come on, come on. That's a really nice one. 57, 4, 3, 2, and sold. So it's kind of fun sitting here. Um, 
for at least half an hour watching my items and sending invoices and then uh gets gets your stuff um uh shipped as soon as they pay and get a head start on tomorrow's shipping um here let's see if this next one this next one's not too exciting it's at three dollars and 25 cents oh why am i so out of breath it's been a long day um almost done though um so yeah, 6, 601, 602, 603, all the way to 630. I have books ending. And then again, as they pay, I will get them shipped and get a head start on tomorrow's shipping. Hope you all enjoyed this video so far. Um, I've been meaning to do a, a day in the life video for a very long time. Here we go, four, three, two, one, sold. For three dollars and twenty-five cents, that one was cheap, but that's all right. I don't mind if my customers get deals every now and again; keeps them coming back for more. And I mean, as long as I buy it at a price that uh, is reasonable. Oh, one of the things I wanted to tell you about um, is in between all of the shipping and uh, taking pictures and listing, and now invoices and stuff at night. Um, Definitely take a few breaks, um, and I like to scroll through eBay listings during my breaks to uh, search for eBay inventory. And there's always a million things to do. Um, sometimes people bring in 10 boxes of books, and that's enough to keep me uh, busy for three hours. All right, last one, and then I'm going to wrap up this video. Finish sending invoices and shipping. Seven, five, four, three, two one sold for 36 dollars nice uh old leather bible all right well thank you all for watching i think i'm gonna post a bookstore tour after this um and yeah i hope you all enjoyed this video all right welcome everybody to the bookstore tour i'm gonna try to make this fast so you walk in the front door over here this is the checkout counter that's all my ebay stuff it's always kind of a piled mess there um you got some new books here new fiction uh romance mystery christmas romance a uh, little bit of kind of sci-fi stuff um over there you got the new kids books tons and tons of brand new kids books um lots of really great titles all for a fraction of the cost of new retail stuff uh, we got tons of these barnes and noble we got harry potter we got little house on the prairie we got uh tolkien we got C.S. Lewis, we got uh, Dale Carnegie, we got all kinds of classics, Hunger Games, Ayn Rand, more Hunger Games, bum, 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 take you down here, we got all kinds of these uh, classics, we have tons and tons of classics, uh, great classic literatures, we got Tar Charles Dickens, we got the display cases full of the really great stuff, Jane Austen, Charles Dickens, Shakespeare, American history, look at that, we got... um. Uh, an early 1800s biography of George Washington. We got Alice in Wonderland. We got the Pride and Prejudice Peacock Edition. That one everyone wants. Uh, Alice in Wonderland. Da, 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 da. All kinds of really cool stuff. Uh, in this one, we got Wizard of Oz. We got really old medical books, farming books, another Alice in, a couple more Alice in Wonderlands. Shakespeare, Dickens, Fine Bindings, Lakeside Classics, Jungle Book. Uh, veterinary books, travel books, poetry books, literature, Egypt, Civil War, dental, bum, 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 Black Stallion, Eastern Press, brand new. We got the controversial books down there. Uh, this is the antique book wall. Um, we got a medical book section. We have a farming section. We got gardening. We got geology. We have science and technology and woodworking and construction and industry and metalwork. Whew. I suppose maybe I should slow down to show you some of the titles. Bum, bum, bum. Diseases of the Heart, 1847. Prosthetic Dentistry. We got lots of dentistry books. Therapeutics of Infancy. Treatment of the Diseases of Children. Practical Anesthesia for Dental and Oral Surgery. School gymnastics. Uh, we got a nice little selection of beekeeping books, poultry books, livestock books. Whew, I'm out of breath. Um, we got some cool old fishing books. Actually, this is 1878 Commercial Products of the Sea, 1864 book on the herring, 
resources of the sea, scientific agriculture from 1850. We got lots of these really cool patent books. Those have tons of illustrations. We've got a nice little se uh, selection of old psychology books. We have Gone with the Wind. We have all kinds of beautiful fine bindings from the mid to late 1800s. We got a few Freemasonry books. Up there's the geology books. Uh, here is American history. It's a piled mess. We all we always have way too many books. Um, these are mostly newer books. These are comic book omnibus. Um, let's take you down here. I think there's a section. This this is older American history books, kind of in that little section. Uh, we got classic literature, fiction, and poetry, kind of from there to there. Got a nice little section of Jane Austen. Um, we got some a bunch of copies of Alice in Wonderland. Again, tons and tons and tons of the classics. Tons of modern library books. There's more li modern library hiding down here. Um, over here we have biography and political history. Look at what do we got? We got Einstein. We got Elizabeth Taylor. We have Burt Reynolds. We got Oprah. We got them all. Uh, and then as far as Wisconsin history, we got that section and I think those few shelves. And then down here is military history and world history. You'll find stuff on uh, World War II, World War I, um, history of European countries and African countries and Asian countries, all that stuff. Uh, this whole shelf is hunting and fishing, but also... Um, Botany, botany and mushrooms and bird watching. Birds of Alaska, the book of bird life amongst the elephants. Fishing tips and tricks, all kinds of really cool stuff. Uh, let's take you on a stroll back here. What do we got? We got some beautiful fine bindings and poetry books. These are my favorite ones. Um, we have a nice little section on mythology, but then there's also mythology over in the occult section over yonder. Um, Westerns, Zane Grey, Louis L'Amour, all that stuff. Uh, this is religion and self-help. Um, bum, bum, bum. We got some heritage classics. Uh, these are all the beautiful fancy leather bindings. Uh, Easton Press, Franklin Library, Folio Society. We got Shelf. After shelf, after shelf, after shelf, after shelf. We got five shelves. Um, and again, I try to price this stuff extremely competitive to anything you're going to find on eBay. And again, we got all the great titles. We got Jane Austen. We got the Bronte sisters. We got Dickens. We got lots of political biographies. Uh, here's a bunch of uh, Folio Society. Uh, there's a bunch of presidential biographies here. Uh, we got a nice selection of uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan books. Sorry, it's a little dark back here. Um, we got Harold Bell, right? We got tons and tons of antique books, uh, different miscellaneous fiction. Uh, we got some insect books. There were some insect books back there, too. Uh, lots of plumbing books, American history, James Fenimore Cooper, more mechanical type books. Dun, dun, dun. All right, let's take you to the other side. Uh, we also have tons of these tin signs. Um, Ten bucks a piece. I think that's the cheapest ones you're going to find anywhere. Uh, lots of funny ones, lots of uh, animal ones. We got Elvis Presley, we got Marilyn Monroe, we got coffee, we got Coca-Cola, we got the Roadrunner, we got motorcycles, we got beer advertising, we got funny stuff, we got political stuff, we got um, a little bit of everything. And again, 10 bucks a piece, I think that's the cheapest, you'll find them everywhere. Got a beautiful fireplace that we uh, fire up in the winter. Uh, there's a bunch of fly fishing books and homeopathic medical books, there's more homeopathic medical books. Down there, down there. We got tons of antique books. We got books piled everywhere here. Um, This is just classic paperbacks. You know, Upton Sinclair, Walt Whitman, uh, Hemingway, F. Scott Fitzgerald, all that kind of stuff. War and Peace, Wuthering Heights, Pride and Prejudice, The Iliad. These are all two, three, four bucks a piece. Um, we got this antique book cabinet. 
Uh, I just added this really nice um, 12 volume set of the works of the Bronte sisters. That one's really nice. We got a Teddy Roosevelt set. Bum, bum, bum. We got some old Bibles, uh, some August Derleth, mythology books, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'll take you over here. We got cookbooks and craft books and uh, soap making and crocheting and sewing. Uh, here's the occult section. Books on ghosts and astrology and astronomy and time travel and psychics and hypnotism, all that stuff. Um, These four shelves are all the mysteries. Um, mysteries and horror, I guess, and uh, true crime. You know, the John Grisham, the James Patterson, the Stephen King, the Michael Crichton. We got a nice selection of um, James Bond books. Bum, bum, bum. Let's go down here. Romance, romance, romance. We got plenty of romance. Anyone that's into romance. Lots and lots of romance. And then we get into the sci-fi. Got a great selection of sci-fi. Um, you know, the Dune... The Game of Thrones, more C.S. Lewis, and Lord of the Rings. Um, so actually, this shelf on this side and then this side as well is all the um, sci-fi. And then actually, um, this was romance, but I moved it to sci-fi and then into pulp paperbacks. Hopefully, there's nothing too uh, raunchy here. Uh, and then we got vintage kids books over here. We got a nice little selection of little golden books. Those are two bucks a piece, two dollars a piece for little golden books. I think I have the cheapest little golden books anywhere in the uh, uh, saw anywhere in central Wisconsin, shall we say? Two bucks a piece. You know, Trixie Belden. Um, we have Tom Swift, Bobsy Twins. Um, I don't think I have any Nancy Drew at the moment. Uh, modern kids books. Modern kids books. We got tons of Dr. Seuss. Um, we got a couple little shelves of miscellaneous antiques and stuff. We got a few records. Records, records, records. All right. Well, that's good enough for uh, this video. Hope you enjoyed the bookstore tour. It's not a huge bookstore, um, but I think I got a little bit of something for everyone. So 